Hello everyone, Paul Paulino here. I'm back with more texturing tips for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can start building your own texture library by taking your own photos. We're gonna go outside, we're gonna take a few photos, we're gonna come back and then create some masks and some tileables. It's gonna be pretty cool. Are you ready? So I see you right after the intro. Damn, I realized I don't have an intro yet. You do, intro, YouTube. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why I think it's important for you to start your texture library in the first place. And not only that, why should you even bother about creating your own textures by going outside taking photos since we have so many free and paid resources out there. Then we have Magiscans, we have textures.com, we even have Substance Designer. We, we can create textures from scratch procedurally. And this is a great point. And I do use these resources myself all the time, but I wanna talk about these things in a different video. Today, my focus would be observation. And I think going outside to, and taking your own photos it's a great practice, especially if you're starting out in texturing. In production, we already have a massive library to work from. But one thing that happens a lot is the client will send you a pack of references for the assets that, you, that you're gonna be working on. That's why it's so important for us to learn how to interpret these images and extract masks and titles from them. Now that I explained the why we're gonna do it, I want to talk about the how we're gonna do it. There are three types of resources that we need to gather to build a successful texture library. We need photos that we can extract masks, photos that we can extract titles from them, and also photos that we're gonna use mainly as a reference. If you have a good camera, that's great. If not, your phone would work just fine, unless you have a flip phone. In that case, you might need to ask a friend for help or something. Before we go outside, let's talk about a few guidelines that I like to keep in mind before taking my photos. The first thing is the lighting conditions. Depending on the lighting conditions, your photos might look too dark or too bright. So make sure to adjust your camera settings or just wait for a time of the day where the light is a bit more diffused. That's the perfect scenario for the kind of photos that we're gonna take. The second thing is to avoid distortion depth of field and weird angles. If you're using a camera, be careful with crazy wide angle lenses and low apertures. We wanna make sure that our photos look very sharp and that they're not distorted on the sides. Also, be careful with some weird angles. Depending on how you take a photo, it might not be useful at all. The third thing is to understand each resource, mask, tileable and reference. If you want to create a mask or a tileable from your object, make sure to get as close as you can so you can get more resolution from the photo. If you want to take a reference photo, it's okay to take it from a distance. Keep in mind that these are just loose guidelines. These are not set on stone. I take a lot of crappy pictures all the time and I'm still able to get some cool textures out of it. So just, you know, just have fun and see what you get. I'm gonna go outside, take a few pictures and then come back so we can start building our library, okay? So I see you soon. Okay guys, I'm back. It was super warm outside, but I took a bunch of photos. Some of them look crappy, but that's okay. Life isn't perfect. Okay, so let's take a look at the photos I took. Some of them look good, others not so much. To speed things up a bit, I already selected a few images to work with. Here in this folder, I have two photos I will use to create my masks, one that will create a tileable, and another one that I'm gonna put into my reference folder. To keep this video short, I speed it up the workflow. But if you're interested in seeing me going through the process of creating these textures, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of technical content coming as well. To create my masks, I use Affinity Photo to quickly isolate the colors in these images and level them to a point where it would look good to me. I also cleaned up the second mask a bit with a paintbrush. You can replicate this process using any photo editor. I could also have used Affinity to create my tileable, but I'm lazy and I decided to use Substance Designer for this task. It's crazy how quick it is. Now that I have all the textures that I need, I'll create three main folders and start sorting my new library. You can get more organized here if you want. If you repeat this process with your own photos, soon you're gonna have a massive library that will save you a lot of time when you start working on your projects. 
As an example, here you can see the mask library that I've collected over the years. I mix a lot of paid, free, and also my own images here. So that's it. The main takeaway of this video is that by going outside and taking your own photos to create your library will help you develop your eye for observation and you're just going to get better and better at uh, finding good textures, finding good references that you can use uh, on your workflow. I also want to hear more about you and how you organize your texture library. Do you have a texture library at all? Tell us about it. So just write in the comments and we'll just keep the conversation going. Okay, so I see you guys in the next video and see ya.